just want to have a little quick message to my subscribers. If any of you guys are still out there, I appreciate you so much. Um, I have a lot of videos planned and hope you guys enjoy uh, the new content. It's been a really long time, which is a little bit of an understatement. Uh, and then to any of the new people here, I hope you stick around as well because I yeah got a lot of stuff uh, planned out. So let's get into it. Today we're going to talk about the new features of VST3 and whether we should be excited about them and make the switch. I very recently started installing VST3 plugins uh, alongside all my VST2 plugins and so I eventually came here on YouTube to find a video to kind of help me understand why I was doing that. With Ableton now supporting it and some developers making the switch abandoning uh, version 2 completely I figured there has to be a comprehensive video to explain this to me like a toddler unfortunately that was not the case uh, so I headed to school and I'm back now and I'm here to tell you what I've learned first we'll start with how VST3 helps you save CPU resources for one they don't use any CPU unless they are actively processing audio which means you can have lot of instances of plugins inside your session that aren't being used and they won't be taking up any of those valuable resources. Another way that VST3 can save resources is with adaptive input and output. For example, if you insert a plugin onto a mono track, uh, it will only use one input and one output or two if it's a stereo effect. Uh, and for a more extreme example, you could use a surround sound capable plugin on a mono or stereo track and it would not be using any resources to process the unused outputs and inputs. Uh, so gone are the days of having a mono and a stereo version of the same plugin. Now let's talk MIDI because this is where it gets good and I mean real good. VST3 can now provide a dedicated event handler bus, and I'm not going to act like I know what that even actually means, but what it allows is a huge variety of control and modulation messages well beyond what simple MIDI allowed for, and even supports other control methods, opening up huge opportunities for future development in external controls and modulation. There is also more advanced MIDI control at a note level, which also open, opens up a whole plethora of possibilities. Uh, and it also supports multiple MIDI input and outputs on a single instance, and then as well as audio input for VST instruments, uh, which allows for some seriously advanced side chaining and cross modulation. I'll, there's a lot you can do with that. They didn't stop there though. They've made some very notable improvements to automation as well. VST3 has the ability to read and write automations and at extremely high resolution, allowing for extremely smooth and accurate automations compared to VST2. They have also implemented uh, parameter categories, which allows you to organize automation parameters uh, within your DAW. A few other features to mention are resizable GUIs, remote control via VST XML, and a new text format that allows better language localization. So now, the million dollar question. Should we make the switch? Absolutely, yes. VST3 is the future and you should start transitioning today. But that said, VST2 isn't going anywhere anytime soon. In fact, VST1, which is the 32-bit versions uh, of VST, were was developed back in 1996 and was w still widely in use till just a few years ago. And VST3 has also been out for quite some time and is just now getting some wider adoption by developers. There also seems to be some options for bridging between VST2 and VST3, so for if some reason your DAW drops VST support, you won't lose the ability to use your older plugins. I currently use JBridger to do this with my 32-bit plugins, 
Uh, so I probably will end up doing something similar in the future. I don't really have an outro yet, so what I'm going to do is just show you guys a little clip of a mix I did using some multi-tracks from the Cambridge Music Technology multi-track library. Um, I will throw links in the description for the library and then also a link to the full mix if you want to check that out. I uh, hope you enjoy. When does your mind relax? Your monster will grow if you don't fight back. 